I've been invited to talk to a bunch of young footballers by the Premier League. It's like an identity crisis and loads of stuff like that. So obviously on my podcast, I always ask everyone that comes on, all the players and everything, like, who are you beyond football? So that's obviously like a, a catchphrase that I use for my podcast. So like, who are you beyond football? So if football was to be taken away from you, like, who are you? Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniel Ginaldi and today I got a little vlog style video for you guys. So I'm currently on my way to Loughborough University. The sports facility is there because I've been invited to talk to a bunch of young footballers by the Premier League. So it's quite a big thing. So I'm honoured to be invited to speak to them. It's an under 16 development programme by the Premier League where I'm speaking to under 16s who haven't got their scholarships. So just speaking to them about my journey of within football and just the beyond football side that I've been promoting through my podcast on my YouTube. So. I'm happy that obviously the, the podcast and what I'm doing on my YouTube, the insight I'm giving into the footballers' lifestyle and everything has been noticed by the Premier League. So today I'm just heading there. I'm going to give you guys an insight. Just come along with me, see how that is. So they currently have like an event where they do a training session and they just, it's basically the Premier League giving them an opportunity to just show them like um, the different avenues in football and just building an identity beyond, the foot, beyond football, like what I'm trying to promote through this channel. So obviously I'm going to have a QA and a session with them, just giving them an insight into my journey of how I balance football and university and how I balance obviously being a scholar and my A-levels. So yeah, make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. Obviously I'm going to try and be more consistent and everything, but yeah, let's go man. University now, just finding my way to the stadium pitch and everything. Let's go. Ashley Williams, we have Bradley Johnson. I want you all to have a question ready. I'm not saying we're going to do 16 questions, but we're definitely going to do a few. So please have, have some questions ready. This is Daniel Janada. How are you doing, Daniel? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Introduce yourself. Yeah, so hi, guys. I'm, I'm honoured to obviously be here to be able to speak to you guys. I'm Daniel Janada. I'm a professional footballer at West Ham. I'm also a I'm also a student at university, so I do um, I study psychology by distance learning with the University of East London, where I'm a sports scholar, which is linked with my club. So yeah, hold it there, hold it there. <laughs> we're we're going to go, we're going to go back to that, back to that journey. So, in our work, yeah, me and me and Carolyn there, you saw earlier. In our work, a core part of our job is working with different people in the clubs, working with with young players like yourself in, in, in the various various clubs. So I met Daniel a few years ago. A little bit different, a bit, and it does align with all the messaging that Steve was saying. I know it's, we, 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 ch we chuck so much information at you over, over these days, but it is aligned. So hopefully there's this common theme going through about 
investing in yourself. You know, my future self, invest in yourself. So meet this young man when he's a first year scholar at West Ham. And on a meeting, you, you, know, you want to get to know him. You know, so what, what, what's your story? So where was you at under 16, Daniel? Starters. So yeah, so I had this exact same situation as you guys. So I used to play for Chelsea when I was under 16. So I was also released. So I had that same experience of getting let go by Chelsea. And yeah, I, like, I, obviously like after the meeting and everything, I, I did go back to the car and obviously shed a few tears and everything. Like, it was obviously a difficult period, but thankfully I was able to get another club, West Ham. So, yeah, it just shows that there's still hope to get another club and everything. So, Daniel, we, we and I don't want to generalise sort of these comments, we hear stories, we meet, we meet scholars in our work, and I'm head of education, I was an education support manager, always, because I believe in it, you know, from a teaching, I believe that education along your football makes you a better player. Okay, you respect to my story, I just, I just believe that. Whether it's rounded, and when I say education, it's not always... A levels over B techs or even C techs or you know, whatever a baccalaureate, whatever course you want to do. Education is about sort of personal development, and it might just be sort of from a human perspective. You know, as Steve was saying, being more kind, being more considerate, community engagement, what, you know, whatever your social action, whatever your your continued education is. But I meet meet Daniel as a first year, so he tells me about his stories. He always had to deal with we release, and we can all connect. If you if you see, there's a common thing. All the people that we put in front of you can really relate exactly to what you're going through. They're here for a reason, you know, there's, there's other things they could be doing, but everyone wanted to buy in to, yeah, I want to be part of this. So meet Daniel, he's had a setback, but he's been fortunate enough to get a, to, to get a scholar at West Ham. But wasn't the easiest of scholarships. Yeah, not the easiest, yeah. Let's just, you know, talk about, you know, so. Been quite up and down the journey, but yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm gonna come back to that bit, because there's a little story there as well, so. Yeah. Like I said, getting to meet you, um, like I said, I'm always pushing the education programs. And if, like I said, and if they are formal, then I, I always think that's good because that gives you capital, gives you currency. Whether we, you know, whether we totally believe in, 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 in whatever courses we are, we're in a world where you know A levels and UCAS points they mean something because it can help you to get to a place like here. So meet Daniel, and you decide to do a blend, which I was a lot of students. So you did a you know a B Tech yeah. plus an A level, yeah, yeah. but you didn't just do. The BTEC diploma plus an A level, did you? You decided to was that is that because of Miss Holmes? Is that because of Carolyn's advice? You did a, an extended diploma yeah, yeah. plus an A level. Yeah, exactly. Plus yeah. your football. Yeah. Plus going to the under seventeen. World Cup. Yeah. Right. So okay. Maybe we had to wear obviously the whole sixth form attire and everything. Maybe we're going for an hour for our lessons at school and then come straight after our lessons into training. So yeah, obviously at that time that. Like, my other teammates, they're obviously looking at us, just laughing at us, calling us like schoolboys, like, oh, go to school, this and that. But obviously, at the back of our minds, we were just always thinking that, like, we're thinking of that beyond football side. So I was obviously thinking that, like, so at that time I, I was doing, I chose to do psychology for A-level. So um, from that point, I was thinking that like, as a backup to football, I was thinking of becoming a sports psychologist. So that's why, so whenever they would used to say, oh, school boy, like, go to school, stuff like that, I was just saying that, like, I used to say to them, like, if anything happens, I'll, I don't need to worry because obviously I got, I got psychology, I got another pathway, but if you get injured, like, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. And obviously, like, when I say that to them, some of them, they shut up and like, mm -hmm. they obviously, they know, like, <laughs> what I'm doing is right, to be honest. But yeah, so just doing that whole, um, Balancing A level psychology and my B Tech extended diploma and as well football, it was it was difficult, but I feel like it was good as well because it gave me a different, it gave me a release. So it's just um, so being in the football system, you can it can sometimes be like you're in a bubble, so you don't really experience like the the real world to an extent where you're just always coming into training, you're seeing the same people, the same group of boys, but. When I had the opportunity to go to my A-level lessons at the school with other people, you see some girls as well, not only boys, like it gives you a release into the real world away and like, like, yeah, just a different environment, a different experience, so it was really good to be honest. And Daniel, super, I wanted to interject, but you were so, you were so on message that I didn't want, I didn't want to stop you there. But, and, and you guys know from your own environment, you'll get, 
you'll get a bit of a narrative around, well, you know, I've got the potential to do more education or, or do some different types of education longs, but I want to concentrate on my football. I've heard that so many times, four years and years. I'm, I'm going to concentrate on my football. Daniel's just given a perfect example of how it's supported him with, with his football, even for a tough, a tough scholarship year. I remember your know, reviews over the, over the two years and lots of times out of the team. Let's go revert back to the under-17 World Cup. You were really aspirational of going. To, it was in Brazil, wasn't yeah, it? Brazil. In Brazil. But you, you couldn't go. Yeah. You have to dilute a bit of the, the tech, but you, 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 yeah. had, you couldn't um, get access to go at one point. Yeah, so obviously just technical issues regarding the club and going with the, the team and just the logistics of it. But in the end, obviously, got it sorted out and thankfully uh, everything went well. We went there and we got past the group stages, but got knocked out by the Netherlands, so we lost in the round of 16. But yeah, it was really good experience. So yeah. when it gets to the end of the scholarship then, so a huge commitment, you're, you're a full-time player, you're doing a four A-level equivalent, not a two A-level yeah. equivalent, which is the, the stock sort of, you're doing four A-levels. That's a lot of UCAT po UCAS points, yeah. you're gonna lend, lend me some. Um, you're doing four A-levels, the football people, no, that's wrong. That's a generalising. Certain people in football say, oh, that, that, might, have, that might have diluted your, your pathway. Where's you as good a player as you were? What, what happened at the end of the, the scholarship year? Yeah, scholarship year was um, really good. So um, as a second year scholar, went to the under-17 World Cup, played a couple games for the under-18s and everything, been involved with the under-23s. It was quite good. So I ended up getting a professional contract whilst obviously doing my A-levels, playing football and everything. So I'm currently a professional footballer at West Ham. Mm. Yeah. So it was a fantastic summer that year. So you're getting yeah. A-level results, B-Tech results, yeah. a professional contract. And you've had a, a fir your first year as a professional this, this year. Yeah. Now, tough, like I said, we all, we all know that these boys are disrupted program. Was your year plain sailing then as a first year professional? No, literally, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a tough year to be honest. So even in the academy system, obviously, it's been a dream to obviously sign my professional contract and it's been good, but obviously it's the same thing like being a goalkeeper, it's, it's just tough in the academy system where there's older goalkeepers and there's just only one spot to play in. So this season I haven't really got as much game time as I wanted to. So I've just been involved in the squad, I've been on the bench, like going to travel long distances. So like if we have a game in up north or just all around, just being on the bench, con constantly working hard week in, week out, and not obviously getting my opportunity. So it's been, there's obviously been tough periods where you just get discouraged, where you're like, oh, um, like, do you, like, what, what else, what more could you feel like you can mm -hmm. do and everything? But in those periods, you just have to just keep on working hard. That's what I did. So I just kept on working hard and obviously, kept going so yeah my question is um what would you say helped you like be very successful with your education especially having like football on top of it that's my yeah. question that's it like literally so that's why i've obviously started a youtube channel the way i've obviously just want to show people the journey where, where which i'm on so just balancing education and football being successful in both so i feel like what's helped me be successful is that i'm very disciplined in what um, I want to do so obviously with my GCSE my A level that like, I was I just said to myself like I want to like get the best possible grades possible so with that discipline it made me like instead of coming home after training and stuff and just obviously playing PlayStation or something I'd go home and revise and like do the work necessary for me to achieve the grades I wanted but as well as that you need to have good time management so it can be difficult to obviously, um, <laughs> it can be difficult to um, just balance it sometimes, but when you have a good time management where you just make sure you're organized with what you need to do when and where, that's what's really important. And also the quality as well of the stuff I do. So for example, like GCSEs, like I didn't really, I don't, I didn't think I went like overboard where I, like stayed up all night and everything. I was just doing quality work, so I knew, okay, this is what I need to revise. This is what I need to do. So that's what I did. So on top of being a young professional footballer and all that entails, yeah. on top of the education, 
And we have Arsene, like I said, Steve said, the High Performance Podcast is one of the best, by the way. Yeah. Is absolutely one of the best. But Daniel, you decided to start sharing your yeah. academy journey on your own podcast as well. Yeah, so um, obviously I spoke about my YouTube channel, so I started my own podcast on my YouTube channel, so it's called the Beyond Football Podcast. So the, I just wanted to, to be a platform for people to just see how it really is as a young footballer, as, as well as just um, to just raise awareness to um, having an identity beyond the game of football. So. Like having an identity beyond the game of football is something that's really important because I feel like when you let it consume you too much, as especially like what Steve was saying and everything, it, it can be really like when it's taken away with you, it can be a really dark place. So we've seen like situations like Jeremy Winston, where obviously he's football's been taken away with him and he feels like there's not not been any hope. So obviously, unfortunate situation like that has led me to that like, just raise awareness because I know a lot of my teammates growing up. A lot of the time, like obviously the guys that make fun of me for obviously doing A levels and that, like a lot of the time, most what they do is obviously go wake up, go to football, and then after football they go home and just don't do anything productive and maybe play PlayStation for hours and that. But obviously that that doesn't create an identity beyond the football because obviously once it's taken away, you don't really know anything else, so it can cause like an identity crisis and loads of stuff like that. So. Obviously, on my podcast, I always ask everyone that comes on, all the players and everything, like, who are you beyond football? So that's obviously like a, a catchphrase I use for my podcast. So like, who are you beyond football? So if football was to be taken away from you, like, who are you? Like, what's your character? Because obviously, um, speaking to obviously the sports that the sports psychologist at West Ham, like she she says something good, like, football is what you do, not who you are. So. Just, I'm just trying to promote that through my YouTube and my podcast, just, just to raise awareness of it, really, what everyone's doing here, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm really honoured to obviously be here to share that. Daniel, absolute pleasure. That's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic 15 minutes. Great way to end that session. Like I said, really appreciate you joining. So, thank you very much, Daniel. Yo, guys, so that's the end of the video. So, I'm really honoured that the Premier League, like, invited me to share my journey and my experience and what I'm doing trying to promote the possible the ability to be successful both in football and education and obviously the importance of having an identity beyond the game so the fact that they've noticed this so it just shows that I'm doing something right man so I'm gonna obviously keep promoting the beyond football side of it make sure you guys continue to like comment and subscribe make sure you just just support it and spread the message like having an identity beyond the game of football is important man